Visa and MasterCard are set to report earnings later this week. The pair of payment giants off to a strong start in 2023, beating the S&P, with Visa up more than 7 percent, MasterCard nearly 9 percent. And the chart master sees more positive performance ahead. Let's bring in Carter Worth of Worth Charting for more. Carter, what are you looking at? You bet. Well, before getting to the charts, of course, it's always curious, how does one figure on these two? Are they consumer finance companies like Capital One and Discover and America Express? Not really. Should they compare to retailers? Because after all, people use these cards when they're shopping. Is it technology? They are, in fact, in the technology sector, number four and five in the actual S&P 500 tech sector. But what we know is they act well, as the old time technical expression goes. Let's look at the charts. And so we have two ways to look at this. This is simply a comparative chart, three lines. And you can see, of course, that uh, these stocks have been laggards over the past two to three years relative to the S&P, and yet their fortunes are reversing. And so rather than doing it that way, what if we hold the S&P as a constant? If you look at the next chart, what that does is that exposes the relative performance. And this has now been going on for the better part of 12 months, which is to say, when those two lines are going up relative to that flat green line, which is the S&P, that is the definition of relative strength. And so I think there's more to come. Let's look at the charts themselves. I think we have one of each. And to my eye, that is exhibiting all the things we want. You're looking at MasterCard. We could flip it to Visa. You'll see that they're the same chart as one would expect. And they both are judged headed higher. Um, just consider this. Over the past three months, uh, they're up 15 and 20 percent, respectfully. Again, Visa and MasterCard. Where's the XLY? It's down five, the consumer sector. Where's XLK, the tech sector, up five? Um, payment processing, consumer finance, all lagging. So however you want to characterize these two big names, uh, I think their performance, their relative performance is important, telling, and likely to continue. Carter, thank you. Carter Braxton Worth of Worth Charting. Um, some would make the case also that it's benefiting from increased travel, which we've definitely seen, Dan. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, we were doing an options action Friday at 530 yes, uh, last week. That was week. a fantastic show, that by the way. Really which oh, I miss you, you guys. Really still I on air, guys. guys. Yeah, all right, sorry. But here's the deal. We talked about American Express. We talked about their exposure to travel, travel like you right. just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of these layoffs that we're seeing in corporate America, these are high-end uh, d consumer Absolutely. discretionary, that sort of thing. So Carter makes a great point, though, on where these guys are focused and where they're not. And I think right now, considering what we might be facing as a recession, you know, they just don't have the credit risk that, that American Express does. But they do have the potential for a slowdown if there was um, from a processing standpoint. But again, they look pretty good technically. Yeah. Mills, where do you stand on this? Yeah, I thought Carter made a really interesting point. You know, what is this stock? And I always look at things versus ISM, manufacturing, PMI, chart the relative performance against the S&P just to see if stocks move cyclically. And you would think that this one would be as cyclical as it comes. It turns out it's really not. Uh, and it's also decisively kind of broken above that downtrend, which so much of the market is contending with. You combine that with high free cash flow margins, that sort of quality characteristic that I keep talking about. And then, Mel, you mentioned it, that 14 percent revenue exposure to China sort of tied to travel and other things relative to the consumer there. Uh, I think there could be more upside here. Yeah, it doesn't. Visa and MasterCard don't care if you're spending money on paper towels or handbags. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a fact of the matter. <laughs> so things cost more money. They're still they're, if they process that transaction, it's still a benefit to them, Courtney. Yeah, it's a good point. And actually, we are still seeing right now, actually, it's interesting, but money market levels actually just hit above what they were in 2020. Like, people still have a lot of cash that are still spending, which will benefit them. Um, what I do like also with Avisa is they do have a really good proven track record of keeping their costs low and protecting their earnings. And I think that's going to be a really important environment like we're in right now. If you look at SoFi, up 27% mm. month to date. And if you look at a firm, up 67% or, or, or thereabouts. So take this and elongate it a little bit. These outperformed Visa and MasterCard early, then it flipped, and now are we getting that bid back in because these have been decimated now. Do you still see that bid coming into those names?